Special thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including a possible new Model Y, the Model S getting delayed from a March release, Tesla revoking FSD beta privileges from users, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, a little teaser of what could possibly come in the future with the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck was announced back in November of 2019, and one of the great benefits of it is its large towing capacity. That's pretty much a prerequisite with a truck, but there have been many different great renders showing what a Cyber Camper could look like. We have gotten nearly no updated details about the Cybertruck since that announcement event, so any tiny bit of information from Elon gives insight, and just last week we heard a bit about how the Cybertruck may be able to power trailers. Elon responded to a tweet saying, quote, Can I plug my tiny house into the Cybertruck to power it? To which he simply responded, yes. When Tesla unveiled the Cybertruck, they talked about it having onboard power for tools and other uses, so this just confirms how much power it can output. Apparently, you'll be able to power this whole camper house if what Elon says is true. Other than that, we're still waiting to see the updated specs on the Cybertruck that should be a little less than 3% smaller from prototype to production, and Elon last said they will give an update probably in Q2. For now, they are focused on building the factory to build the truck, and progress is coming along at an insane pace. The Cybertruck will be built at Tesla's Giga Texas, which Elon Musk has said will be an ecological paradise. He said, quote, It's about 2,000 acres, and we're going to make it a factory that is going to be stunning. It's right on the Colorado River, so we're actually going to have a boardwalk where there will be a hiking slash biking trail. It's going to basically be an ecological paradise. Birds in the trees, butterflies, fish in the stream, and it'll be open to the public as well. So not closed and only Tesla. So if anyone's interested in working at Giga Texas with engineering production, whatever the case may be, please let us know. Well, for now, we don't see any of those aspects coming together, but we can see that the design of the factory is actually taking some cues from the Cybertruck itself. This photo posted by Tesla owners Austin on Twitter shows both where progress is at and the fact that the sides of the factory have a unique design. Instead of a normal factory look, at least from a distance, the concrete and steel gives it a cyberpunk look. Fitting for a factory that will be building the Cybertruck, but long term it may end up just looking like a normal factory. Now nothing at Tesla is normal, especially with Elon Musk at the helm, and now he is no longer CEO. His position will remain, but he will officially be called Techno King of Tesla. This is effective as of March 15th via an actual SEC filing, so it isn't just that he's calling himself that. Additionally, Tesla's CFO, Zach Kirkhorn, is now Tesla's master of coin, also retaining his same position. Pretty ridiculous, but also hilarious, and it's Tesla doing what Tesla does. Lots of eye rolls, but I personally think it's fun to see people in such high positions not taking themselves too seriously, unless you think Techno King is an ego move by Elon, which who knows. At the same time that they did that, they also changed the position of another executive to President of Heavy Trucking, showing that they are getting more serious about the Tesla Semi launching this year. Additionally, they posted a new video of the semi going around the test track, showing that it's quick, real, and running on its own power. This came after Tesla was spotting doing some semi filming with a Model Y camera car, so it looks like they may have something to announce soon about the semi. Next up, the new refreshed Tesla Model S is having some delays. Tesla unveiled it for a March release, but we have yet to see deliveries. While there have been a large number of new Model S's produced at Tesla's Fremont factory, it's two weeks from the end of the month, and order holders have not been given delivery confirmations. Some have even heard about delays. The first delay we heard about was a few days ago when Tesla both moved the timeline for the Plaid Plus Model S to mid-2022 instead of late 2021, and they raised the price $10,000 for that model only. It isn't clear why this delay has happened for the Model S. It could mean that they have looked at demand and battery supply and realized that they can't actually produce that car until mid-2022, so all orders will be delayed until then. This could make sense since that car is so far out and they changed the website delivery date before any new Model S's have delivered. However, it could also mean that they have a lot of demand for the Model S, as Elon has talked about, so new orders are going to be delivered in mid-2022. If you ordered a Plaid Plus Model S on day one, maybe you'll still expect delivery in late 2021, but I'm leaning towards 2022 since the Model S is facing some other delays. Joey Klender, a writer at Tesla Rati, pointed out that there has been a new building permit in place for 
Tesla's factory. The project description specifically says GAS slash X tool install or general assembly model S and X tool install. There were reports a couple weeks back of Tesla's factory shutting down and it did, although it only lasted a couple days. They were facing parts shortages and took the time to retool and that could be what they are dealing with for the Model S as well. It's just not as big of a deal since it isn't their top selling car like the Model 3 or Y. Parts shortages and microchip shortages are happening all across the industry. When they announced the car, they mentioned that it includes 10 teraflops of processing power on par with today's newest consoles. As always, we expected this to be a bit of an exaggeration, but leaked information has shown that the Model S is actually using AMD Ryzen chips. These are indeed the same chips that the Xbox Series X and PS5 are using, and people have made comparison charts to show similarities and differences. We won't know final specs until the Model S comes, and we assume that there will be some differences in gaming power from a PlayStation 5, but the fact that the Model S is using this chip could be contributing to the delay of the car. It will be great for the car and gaming, but AMD has been facing a lot of shortages impacting gaming consoles quite a bit, and the Model S could definitely be a part of that. We don't have confirmation of the true reasoning, but for the time being, the Model S assembly line appears to be getting retooled, both the Plaid and Plaid Plus have been delayed, and we'll see when the first long-range model gets delivered, hopefully soon. Order holders for the Plaid Model S have said that Tesla has told them more of a May to June delivery timeline for that one, so that is also delayed as well as the Plaid Plus. Moving on to the Model Y, that car continues to be incredibly popular for Tesla. However, for the European market, they have decided to wait to sell it there until they can ship it from their currently under construction Giga Berlin factory. Elon Musk posted some progress footage showing that along with their Giga Texas factory, Giga Berlin is coming along quickly. They plan to build it there and deliver it from there in mid-2021, and we just got some new first photos of Model Y bodies coming out of Giga Berlin. Last week, I talked about the Giga Press machine being installed there, and this latest photo not only shows covered Model Y bodies, but shows one of them in a new color. This was posted by at Gigafactory4 on Twitter, and what's interesting is that the entire body is this golden yellow color. Usually the body would not be primed with this color for Tesla's typical five paint colors, so this could definitely point to a new color coming out of Berlin. Elon Musk has talked a ton about a new revolutionary paint shop at Giga Berlin. He tweeted saying, quote, Berlin will use 4680 cell with structural battery pack and front and rear single piece castings, also a new paint system. Furthermore, he said, quote, the Berlin paint shop is going to have another opportunity for another three layers of paint. In order to get dimension on paint, you really need multiple layers. We're going to do this in Berlin for the first time. Before we go any further, I'd like to give a special thanks to today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of inspiring and useful classes for creative people on many different topics. They have thousands of classes focused on topics like design, photography, freelancing, video production, and more. And one class I've been particularly enjoying lately is iPhone filmmaking with Caleb Babcock and Niles Gray. Skillshare is made for learning, so there are no ads, they are constantly launching new premium classes, and it's very affordable, coming in at less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. When you join, you can also try one of Skillshare's new live classes. Experience real-time inspiration as you connect with popular teachers while watching and working along with other members. Now the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below will get a free trial of a Skillshare premium membership, so check it out and explore what new things you can learn today. A recruiter at Tesla's Giga Berlin posted a photo of paint samples for potential future vehicles at Giga Berlin, showing three normal colors, but this gray having more of a green hue to it. There wasn't much information there, but the photo was later deleted. Then lastly, when asked about his favorite paint color, Elon said, quote, new deep crimson from Giga Berlin is my favorite. That wouldn't have helped much, but his personal car with that deep crimson paint was spotted at Tesla's design studio in Los Angeles. He specifically said that it will be coming from Giga Berlin, so it seems that this golden slash yellow primer could very well be the first stage for deep crimson or another new paint color that Tesla will be making in the future for the Model Y in Berlin. Since Fremont would need retooling to do new paint colors and that is their main factory, we will likely see new paint colors come out of Tesla's new factories before we see them out of Fremont. I wouldn't be surprised if later this year the Model Y ships from Berlin with a paint color only available in Europe. Now speaking of Giga Berlin in progress, Tesla has listed 28 new jobs in a wide range of categories for their Berlin factory as they move closer to their goal of hiring 7,000 employees at the factory before manufacturing begins in July of this year, last we heard. 
A big aspect of Tesla's Giga Berlin factory will be battery production as Tesla pushes to make their own 4680 cells at multiple factories, along with their suppliers. According to a new report, Tesla is planning to start battery production in 2022 at Giga Berlin instead of 2023 as previously reported. Around one fifth of their hiring is said to be for battery specialists and the production facility for batteries will be located right next to where they build the cars. This would save a lot of time and money for Tesla as they would be producing the batteries and supplying the cars right there at the same factory. Currently, they have their third-party battery suppliers and their Gigafactory Nevada making cells for their cars built in Fremont, California. This Giga Berlin battery facility is also expected to be one of the biggest in the world, so there will be a lot to hear about from Tesla at Giga Berlin. Now, moving on to Tesla's full self-driving beta. This is the beta of Tesla's self-driving technology that has been promised for a long time, and it has been out for a number of months at this point. Up until recently, it has been exclusive to a small handful of beta testers, but Elon Musk posted a couple tweets asking for more testers. After a ton of responses, he said that they will be adding a download beta button in around 10 days, and followed that up to say that it would be arriving by the end of this week with version 8.3. Well, tons of owners have got excited for this to come, and it could still happen, but Elon tweeted again and somewhat shut the whole thing down in my opinion. On March 12th, he tweeted to say, quote, FSD beta has now been expanded to around 2,000 owners, and we've also revoked beta where drivers did not pay sufficient attention to the road. No accidents to date. Next significant release will be in April. Going with pure vision, not even using radar, this is the way to real world AI. They have been doing significant releases for beta testers, but overall, people who purchased the full self-driving package have been mostly left in the dark with the promise of city streets coming later this year. There have been rumors that Tesla still plans to add this download beta button, but do it without telling customers and bury it in the service tab so it takes some effort to download. This would prevent customers from downloading it without truly knowing what it is, and also allow them to expand to many more beta testers. It seems like they already did their expansion of the beta, however, to around 2,000 owners, and will continue waiting for the time being. Per usual though, I'd love to be proven wrong. However, now I wanna focus on the part of that tweet where Elon said, quote, we've also revoked beta where drivers did not pay sufficient attention to the road. This is a very interesting thing to mention. Teslas include interior cameras, but for the time being, they give options to the driver to turn them off. The long-term purpose of this camera is for Tesla's robo-taxi network that Elon has mentioned many times. They want their cars to become full self-driving and allow customers to put their car on the robo-taxi fleet, and then this camera would be extra protection if someone did something to your car. However, now this camera is being used to monitor beta testers. Having the full self-driving beta is something that Tesla does not take lightly. They are dealing in rough waters here, and regulation is incredibly tough since any accidents involving full self-driving will be investigated heavily. However, they are also letting average people test it, as opposed to keeping beta testing within the company. This technology has a lot of potential, but until it is near perfect, comes with a lot of potential risk, which is why beta testers need to be paying attention and ready to take over. When someone asked about how Tesla is monitoring drivers, someone tweeted saying, quote, driver facing camera monitors where drivers are looking. It would detect if a beta user was looking down at, for example, a phone or laptop for significant amounts of time. Definitely dangerous to do as a beta tester. Elon confirmed this tweet with a simple yes response. First off, that seems pretty crazy to me, but it also makes sense that this is part of what beta testers are signing up for at this point. One quick aside is that the Model S and X do not have an interior camera, so I'm curious if they are monitoring those vehicles with other data collected in the car, or if those testers just don't have to be monitored in the same way. In any case, if Tesla is currently using the interior camera to monitor beta testers, at what point will they disable this? Every single feature currently included in Tesla's full self-driving package is still in beta. Auto steer is in beta, navigate on autopilot is in beta, summon is in beta, and traffic light and stop sign control is in beta. I suppose that auto park may not be in beta, but it wouldn't be quite in the same category, and it feels like it's a beta in any case. So when the current full self-driving beta that handles city streets gets delivered to all customers, will that be when it's out of beta beta? Current testers have to let their interior camera monitor them, but there's no way Tesla will be able to keep doing that when this gets delivered to all customers. Additionally, if customers paid for the feature, they won't be able to revoke privileges for it once it is widely released. I'm just really curious to see at what point on that scale, Tesla decides that monitoring is no longer needed and customers can just use the beta no matter how they use it. For right now, the beta is in an early enough stage that testers will have privileges revoked if they misuse it. So is it realistic to expect Tesla to give this to all customers in Q2 or later this year like Elon has said? 
We'll see, but it seems like there is a lot of work to be done before this is legally allowed on anyone's Tesla without some sort of agreement for monitoring and possible loss of privileges. Next up is a quick piece of news for the Model Y. The Model Y has now experienced its first winter and Tesla is now pushing out a software update with some improvements. Teslas are known to drive well in cold climates, but have a number of issues with door handles freezing shut and regenerative braking being unavailable for long periods of time. This new update is 2020.4.12 and says, quote, minor cold weather improvements and bug fixes. Additional enhancements have been made to improve the overall experience of your Tesla vehicle in cold weather. Reportedly, most customers have noticed much stronger regenerative braking in cold temperatures. Now, last up today, Tesla insurance will be expanding to multiple new states soon. Currently, Tesla insurance is only available in California, but the next states are supposed to be Texas, Illinois, and Washington. Tesla has long-term ambitions to make Tesla insurance a new type of insurance, involving lots of vehicle data to help drivers pay less if they are careful, but for the time being, it is pretty much a normal insurance operation. And they offer competitive rates for Teslas. Teslas are pricey, but they are also very safe with many features to avoid accidents, and that is what Tesla insurance is trying to tackle here. According to Forbes, insurance regulators in Illinois and Texas have approved rates and policies for Tesla insurance, so it should be coming soon. That's all the Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you're interested to find out how much I paid for my first year owning the Model Y, you can check that video out linked over here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.